To aspire is to be human. From early childhood, we all naturally develop goals for the future. Goals that give us the motivation to push forward and overcome life's hardships. These emotions often build and build until they finally culminate right around high school, which is a turning point in all of our lives. It's during this time that the oppressive force of reality starts to trespass upon our aspirations, placing us at an important crossroad. Do we choose to pursue our dreams, knowing that life will inevitably push back, or do we give them up and simply go with the flow? How do teenagers, at the peak of their adolescence, feel when facing this crossroad? The teenagers who have given up hope, think they've hit immovable barriers, feel aimless, or have lost sight of what they once wanted in life. What happens when someone is no longer able to achieve their dream? Anyway, you uh, clicked on this for an entertaining video showing the robot game, not a terrifying introspection on the human condition. Hello! Are you a fan of mecha anime? Enjoy stories about people chasing their dreams? Or just really love Steins Gate and want more stories How set in the same fishing? universe? If you answered yes to any of those, then Robotics Notes is for you. My name- <clears throat> Ugh. What happened to my voice there for a second? Anyway, my name is Cullen, and once upon a time, I made a couple videos about that one semicolon series. It goes without saying, but the Science Adventure series, or Psy ADV, I'm not gonna call it is my favorite series in the medium. It's not an exaggeration to say that Psy ADV's popularity peaked with Steins Gate. It sold pretty dang well, so when it came time to make the next mainline game, there were some pretty big shoes to fill. I find it both ironic and thematically fitting that Robotics Notes has always struggled to escape the shadow of its more successful older sibling. Having said that, Robotics Notes is not Steins Gate 2. It's Robotics Notes. Thankfully, after eight years of being unlocalized, Spike Chunsoft has brought over not only Robotics Notes Elite, but also its recently released sequel, Robotics Notes Dash, on PS4, Switch, and PC. Unfortunately, there has been an abundance of confusion and a severe lack of hype surrounding the release of this double pack. So as always, duty calls. Yeah, that's right, gamers. I'm back. To attempt to provide an entertaining and spoiler-free introduction video that aims to answer any questions you might have. Primarily, what is the Robotics Notes Double Pack? And why should you care? But before that, let's talk about confusing naming conventions. The Elite in Robotics Notes Elite is not the same Elite in Steins Gate Elite, aka meaning that it is a remake that changes the presentation to be entirely an anime visual novel hybrid. Robotics Notes Elite came out in 2014, two years after the original Robotics Notes, and is the definitive edition. It fixed the pacing, improved the 3D models, and sparingly uses clips from the anime to give certain scenes more. In Personally, I really like Steins Gate Elite, but I understand that it wasn't everyone's cup of tea, so I hope this explanation alleviated any worries. Those in the know might find this to be an unimportant waste of time, but I've already seen plenty of people confused about it, and I'm not gonna take any chances. You haven't seen my comment section! You don't know my struggle! With that out of the way, what is Robotics Notes even about? The game follows main protagonists Kaito and Akiho, childhood friends who are the only two members of their school's robot research club. This group of weirdo misfits live on the beautiful island of Tanigashima in the year 2019. The first thing to keep in mind is that Robotics Notes originally came out in 2012, so this is their take on what the world could have looked like seven years in the future. In this reality, an anime called Gun Barrel came out in 2015 and exploded in popularity worldwide. This in turn caused a robot boom that brought about significant technological advancements. Back to to our protagonists, Kai is a laid-back video game enthusiast who spends his days slacking off and constantly playing the world's most popular fighting game, Kill Ballad. He refuses to do anything for anyone unless they manage to beat him in KB, which is a little hard to do considering he's the fifth-ranked player in the world. A more passive protagonist like him seems unlikable upon first glance but his development is natural and expertly crafted. We'll get back to Kai and why I find him to be one of my favorite protagonists in the series. I'll be the first to admit, he's a slow burn. Just know, it does pay off. 
Then there's Aki, who for quite a while will be more of a traditional main character in terms of advancing the story. She's the polar opposite of Kai, an enthusiastic, ambitious girl with a larger-than-life dream to build a real, working, giant robot based on Gunveril. If you somehow need more of a reason to adore her, she loves giant robot anime, model kits, and frequently makes Gundam references. So you know, kind of the best. She's inherited the club's presidency and their unfinished gun barrel inspired robot prototype from her sister, the Gun Build One. Look at this adorable boy, oh I love him. She desperately wants to finish it one day and show it off at the Tokyo Expo. The game story mostly deals with her trying to build the momentum to achieve her dream, with Kai supporting her in the background along the way. Together they have to restore the club's reputation, recruit talented new members, raise money, and show the world that Gun Veril is the key to achieving dreams. Meanwhile, Kai, spending his time being a stinky gamer, accidentally stumbles across a global conspiracy from a deceased man named Ko Kamijima. You know, as the gamers like to do. In classic Sai ADV fashion, these two plotlines naturally end up colliding in a fascinating way. Robotics Note's pacing and tone are probably the first things that will stick out to fans of the series. These games are always known for their slow build-ups. But let me tell you, Robotics Note's takes the cake. And then adds more cake. It's like a double stacked cake. It's a really big cake. There's so much cake! But in a good way. There is a certain term that is sure to scare people off as soon as I say it. But I implore you to stick with me here, because despite my initial hesitation, I fell for this game hard. Alright, brace yourselves everybody, here we go. Slice of life. I know, I know, it just makes you shudder, doesn't it? If the tone of Steins Gate was like, Assemble lab members. I, Hoin Koma, have invented the ultimate machine to create the perfect puppet corn. Robotics Notes is more like. <laughs> <laughs> High school is an overuse setting as is, and in my opinion, very few anime series or VNs tend to get these kind of stories right. But Robotics Notes is the golden exception. <laughs> My total playtime was 59 hours, and while the build-up should have felt like an eternity, there wasn't a single moment that I wasn't completely invested. The dialogue, writing quality, and interesting implementation of realistic science and engineering made sure that there was never a dull moment. The vibes of Robotics Notes are just beyond comfy. The setting of Tanigashima is a nice departure from the wards of Tokyo Sai ADV games usually take place in, and further sets it apart from the other entries. It's a wonderful breath of fresh air. Robotics Notes is the longest game in the series, and thankfully, by the time I reached the credits, I felt every single second used mattered. The staggering length of the game benefits the characters more than anything else, leading to Robotics Notes having one of the best casts in the series. The Robot Club's chemistry is on a whole other level because of this. Their dynamic as a group develops naturally as the game goes on, and they eventually come together to feel like a genuine friend group. All of them have something significant to add, be it to the cast or the story as a whole, and none of the characters feel meaningless. But don't you worry, there's plenty of drama sprinkled throughout to keep the stakes high, which only ramps up as the narrative progresses. This game might seem chill on the surface, but it deals with serious subject matter, and ends up exploring interesting themes such as brainwashing and propaganda via social media. It gets dark. I have no idea how this game managed to get a T rating. Like, Frau alone should have made it an M. You know what else kept me so invested? Good old Psy ADV interactivity that subverts traditional VN progression mechanics. Most visual novels have a very straightforward way of branching their stories, usually in the form of simple dialogue choices. Robotics Notes, like other Psy ADV titles, has a unique approach to this. Pro tip! At almost any point in the story, as long as you are in Kai's perspective, you can press one of those sexy trigger buttons to open up the menu for his phone droid. The important features here are an eye 
island map, Holy shit, is that translated? documents section, kill ballad, an augmented reality camera app called Iruo that lets you look around any of the environments in the game to view more information about them with their geotags. And I want to highlight that one in particular because it's probably one of the coolest parts in the game, especially since Tanigashima is an actual island you can visit in the real world and has been recreated almost perfectly. And last, but certainly not least, Tweepo. Or is it pronounced Twippo? I think it's Tweepo. I don't, I don't know. I don't care. You thought the email trigger system in Steins Gate was cool? Well, now you get a social media addiction trigger system. Introducing Tweepo, a look into the future from the past. Ever wish you could emulate the endless feed of bad takes on world events, chat about being a gamer, shitpost, and even call out your friends? Tweepo has everything you could ever want, and more. Gotta respect how the series continues to accurately portray internet culture without going full. How do you do, fellow kids? What? Make sure to check Tweepo frequently, since there are loads of fun ways the game uses it to convey aspects of the story that wouldn't naturally fit into the actual narrative. Tweepo is also how you unlock the game's character routes after the common route is cleared. This is arguably the most obtuse aspect of Robotics Notes, but after a lot of reflection, I kind of find it to be one of the best implementations of the route system in the series. Usually, visual novel routes tend to be laid out as alternate timelines or realities. And unless there's a gigabrain time travel reason to explain them, character development found in these routes can't be implemented into the main story. RN actually sidesteps this issue by having the character routes all be canon to the main story. Confused? I'll break it down. After phase 5 is cleared, you get the first ending and are thus booted out to the main menu. Want to see more of the story? Then you best get off that sad gamer butt and get to tweep. The roots aren't alternate realities, but make up phases 6 through 8 that lead up to the true ending. How you respond to specific characters' tweeps will allow you to unlock the next chapter in the story, and these need to be unlocked in sequential order. I'll give you guys a nudge in the right direction in case anyone wants to figure out how to progress on their own, because it can be pretty confusing at times. Your saving grace is the daily record section of the menu, which organizes your autosaves into a calendar based on when events in the story took place. This, in my opinion, makes the process of unlocking the other routes easier than it usually is. I'm honestly kind of blown away I've never seen this before, even in the same series. Like what? July 30th is the magical date when your Tweepo replies start mattering. So remember that and load there every time you want to unlock a new route. A good rule of thumb is to respond to everyone in a way that would be beneficial to their character growth. And since you can only reply to your friends' tweeps, it's easy to narrow down who you need to focus on. It's confusing, but once you get into the flow of things, it starts to make a lot of sense. To be honest, I still wouldn't hold it against you if you needed to use a guide. It might help your sanity to do so. So in the description of the video, I'll be at least listing which order you need to go about unlocking the roots to make your experience feel a little less aimless. How it's set up might seem annoying, but on a thematic level, it's brilliant. It perfectly fits Kai's character arc as he has to go out of his way to get involved with the people around him to advance the story. Plus, this means that everyone's character development in these chapters has a lasting effect, and their arcs weave perfectly into the overarching story. There are some issues with it, absolutely, but once you get over the hump of figuring out what you need to do, I'm sure you'll find it incredibly rewarding. Or I'm just a pretentious piece of shit, I don't know. I thought it was cool. Hey, remember that Kamijima guy I mentioned earlier? Well, world-shattering conspiracies don't unravel themselves, and that's exactly what you get to do. <laughs> In Kai's free time, he looks into the Kamijima reports, which are spread throughout the island and locked behind a series of conditions. When it comes time to look for them, you, the player, are given a list of locations to investigate. Here the game goes full point-and-click ADV, having you comb through these environments with your camera to find hidden icons to unlock the next report and advance the story. I won't go into the actual details of these reports or how to find them, cause that's the mystery, but they're pretty fascinating and do a good job expanding on a lot of of the pre-established lore of the series. Speaking of which, this is a pretty good time to discuss the elephant in the room. Hey Cullen, you've been saying side EV this and other games that, but I need to know, can I, strapping gamer and budding keenographer, partake in this game if I've never played one of those semicolon games? Good question. Can I get a drum roll? No, come on, we need something with more impacto. Oh hell yeah, there we go. 
That's the right stuff. The answer to that is... Yes! Are you sure about that? Well, kinda. Every mainline game can technically be played standalone, but since they all take place in the same universe, there are a lot of references to past games. Robotics Notes does this by heavily expanding on lore only hinted at in Chaos Head and Steins Gate. So as long as you understand that some big references might fly over your head, it's safe to say you can jump right in. Your experience would be improved by at least playing Steins Gate, and the ending will have a few points that will feel out of left field without that and Chaos Head, but it's not necessarily required. Yet. Hey, wait, wasn't this a double pack or something? Oh, you were doing a thing. Okay, I'll shut up now. In 2019, Robotics Notes finally got a long-awaited sequel, with a fun twist. The dash in the title stands for none other than Daru the Super Hacker. In Robotics Notes, he just appeared on Tweepo and had a crucial off-screen role, but now our favorite perverted gentleman hacker comes to visit Tanigashima for vacation six months after the events of the original game. Taking place in an alternate history where 2020 is in a complete dumpster fire, Kai and Daru share protagonist duties in a sequel that ties up loose ends and resolves lingering character arcs. And that's all I'm gonna say for now. That's right! I have tricked you with this thumbnail! For your own enjoyment, I'm barely talking about this one at all! The art just looks cool! The real plot hook for Robotics Notes Dash obviously heavily spoils the original's ending. You know, given that it's a direct sequel. So I can't really discuss this one too much. It carries over almost all the mechanics from the original game, but the root system has been changed, which will be good news to people who aren't pretentious like myself and weren't fond of how Elite handled it. Because Daru is one of the protagonists, you even get to see what the future Gadget Lab is up to all these years later on Tweepo. For this reason, and a couple other spoilerish ones, it puts Dash in a bit of a hard position to recommend to people who have only played Robotics Notes, or only played Steins Gate, because it's a sequel to both of them. And also kind of the Chaos games as well. Just a bit of advice for any Steins Gate onlys, I see you, I respect you, don't get me wrong. Um, do not go into Dash without Robotics Notes. You are going to be extremely lost. I know that my coverage on this might seem slightly lacking compared to RN Elite, but that's kind of unavoidable. <laughs> oh, come on, what do you want from me? I'm gonna make a full video on it in the future, just doesn't work in this format. Give me a break. Honestly, even with Dash's barrier to entry, don't let it put you off from jumping on this double pack, because I can't stress enough how stellar of a deal it is. Let's talk value, shall we? Elite is a massive game that's worth $60 on its own, and the double pack includes Dash for no extra cost. Dash isn't as big of a game, but for $60, you're getting two full-length VNs. I know the gamers tend to have a weird concept of monetary value when it comes to VNs, but that's like roughly 90 hours of content? for $60. I really don't see how anyone can make the argument that this isn't worth the money. They're also available to purchase individually for around 35 USD on digital storefronts with various launch discounts depending on what system you buy it on. If you aren't sure that you want both games off the bat, this is a really good option. Personally, I find it more than worth the $60 for the physical double pack because you also get this neat phone droid pin pack. I know this segment seems a bit corporate shilly of me, but in all honesty, I just can't get over how Spike is releasing this bundle for so cheap when I spent $100 on the Japanese version of this bundle and all I got to show for it was a drama CD and an acrylic stand. And I lost the acrylic stand. You have me by the throat, Chiyomaru. My wallet belongs to you whenever you release these Japanese picture books I can't even understand. Let me go. Oh, God, I need to learn to stop talking so much. I even tire myself out. Oh, yeah, and it makes my job miserable, you piece of shit. This is an introduction video and not a review, but there is one objective critique that is important to mention. So, the translation is, uh... Weird? The dialogue flows very well, but there are issues worth addressing. Phrases and names can be inconsistent with past titles, and some terms were translated wrong or just far too literally, like the human cultivation slash domestication project becoming the human ranch project. There's plenty of other stuff. I'm not the best person to talk about this, but it's worth mentioning. Like I said, it's a weird situation. I wouldn't say it's game ruining since it didn't take away from my overall enjoyment, 
but there are issues. Cheers, I'll drink to that, bro. And speaking of enjoyment, the presentation as a whole is worthy of serious praise. The production value for this game was impressive for a 2012 VN, and Elite improved upon it even further. Those anime cutscenes I mentioned earlier are all stellar and fit in extremely well. The CGs were a pleasant surprise too, and might just be some of the best in the series. If not, at the very least, the most consistent in quality. Everything is fully voiced in Japanese, and all of it sounds great, and the soundtrack by series veteran Takeshi Abo, once again, full of bangers. That's right, we got loud bangers. Soft bangers. Gamer bangers. Robot bangers. That's right, there's bangers of all shapes and sizes. But you know what isn't a banger? having to address Elephant 2 and 3 in the room. I've seen the anime already, so why should I bother playing the game? And, well, an anime exists, so I can just watch that and not bother to play the game, right? The Robotics Notes anime adaptation is solid. Certainly more faithful than some things. And for many years was the only way the West could experience this story. Like with all Sci-DV adaptations though, it just can't compare to the source material. A except these two? They're, they're great. Uh, I really love that one in particular. It's actually better than the VN. But we're not ready to have that discussion yet. I watched the RN anime years ago, and after finishing the game recently, I decided to give it a rewatch. It's fine, but misses the mark in many areas and is nowhere near as good as the VN. Crucial details are cut, the villain and entire ending sequence don't have as much the side cast gets a lot less love, the faster pace feels uneven and doesn't give many of the plot points room to breathe, and the gravest mistake of them all? It fails to properly convey the depth of Kai's character. Oh Kai. I love this boy so much. As I said earlier, he might be my favorite protagonist in the series now. I love everything about him, from his simple-minded gamer brain to his complicated, realistic portrayal of depression. You won't really pick this up from the anime, but Kai is someone who has essentially given up on his hopes and dreams for the future. He disregards his studies not to achieve a dream like his best friend, but to devote his time to playing video games as a way to chase what's left of his past. His depression doesn't come from from moping around or crying constantly, but from living his life as apathetic as possible to almost everyone and everything. There's a lot more to his character that I would hate to spoil, and his growth is just Mwah. How he handled losing sight of his dream differs from the rest of the Robot Research Club, who have all dealt with variations of that same issue to different extents. That confusing root system I mentioned earlier is something I'm able to forgive completely, because the player is put in the same position as Kai when it comes to advancing the story and helping his friends get over their hardships and trauma. Kai and the player have to put in serious work to low-key assist with the development of gun build and get closer to his friends. It's not implemented perfectly, but I wouldn't have it any other way. You both have to reach out to your friends. You both have to search for the Kamijima reports. Without Kai even realizing it, his actions drastically help those around him and bring everyone together towards a brighter future. Robotics Notes continues to build on its themes with the development of the cast until it comes to a beautiful crescendo in the true ending arc, which wraps the game up in a bow as the perfect love letter to the mecha genre. You get to witness the Robot Club come together and work as a team, using their raw passion and friendship to finally overcome what's been holding them back. It's satisfying, it's emotional, and best of all, they did the mecha anime thing where they play the opening when the hype shit happens. You are not immune to Kino cliches. Oh my God, why are you still watching this go by these games? Robotics Notes is the most character-driven Psy ADV has ever been, which is saying quite a lot since the series is known for being character-driven. In terms of quality, it's the most consistent entry in the series, and it reaches emotional peaks that are entirely unique to this game. It is my favorite cast, a wonderful story, some of the best world-building I've seen in a VN, and it might be one of my new favorite Psy ADV games. Yeah, can't believe I'm saying it either. The themes aren't as ambitious or subtle as many of the other 
other entries, but they're executed magnificently. I fell for robotics notes harder than I ever expected. I love this game so much, y'all, flaws and all. Both Elite and Dash are fun entries to the series that are well worth your time and money. Even with some of the issues that have popped up, the Western support for Psy ADV is as strong as ever due to our support as fans. These games mean a lot to me and are responsible for this channel getting its start at all. I love this series with all my heart, and as always, I hope my gushing can convince you to love it just as much as I do. Thank you for watching, everyone! As always, some thanks need to be thunked. Big thanks to Spike Chunsaw for providing me with a review copy so I could get English footage to you guys. And massive thanks to the three people that helped make this project a reality. My co-writer Vic is a massive Robotics Notes fan and helped me keep everything consistent. My co-script editor Supreme Zerger came in and helped us iron everything out. And Xanderact helped us with that beautiful thumbnail. That's all for me gamers. Follow your dreams and stay safe out there. Bye bye.